The Dadaist art movement was founded in 1915, 1916 and 1918. It lasted until the mid-1920s or so, then it was promptly put out of its misery. The word was first used by Tristan Zara, Richard Hörsenbeck and or Hugo Ball. Actual facts are not the most important thing when understanding Dada, which was very much the point of the scene. Most agree that it was a movement that was a reaction to a European society that had basically gone mad. Science, logic and reason were meant to liberate humanity from the superstitions of the past. Either that, or the nation and the church were meant to be the bulwarks of civilised and lasting society. Instead, World War I happened. World War I was basically a giant threshing machine in which many young men, idealistic and patriotic, were fed in one end and came out the other with bits of their bodies and minds missing. Once that was done, they would be expected to either just get jobs and settle back into society again, or they'd just be locked up in loony bins or other institutions, or just chucked out onto the streets where the bourgeoisie would ignore them as they tried to sell pencils to stay alive. After World War I, there was a pandemic of influenza, then a worldwide economic depression, then World War II. And so it proved that science had invented machine guns, long-range guns, poison gas, tanks and flamethrowers, and new types of aeroplanes for aerial bombardment and submarines for sinking ships, and logic and reason were used to justify all this in the name of the nation and the church. In short, Europe, and then later the rest of the world went to hell. Faced with this, the artists who plunged themselves into Dadaism did so out of utter contempt for such a thing as society. In the words of Tristan Zara, the origins of Dada were not the beginning of art, but of disgust. It was the only reasonable, rational, logical reaction to a world that had gone to hell willingly, cheering and hurrahing as it did so. Every product of disgust capable of becoming a negation of the family is Dada, a protest with the fists of its whole being engaged in destructive action. Dada, knowledge of all the means rejected up until now by the shamefaced sex of comfortable compromise and good manners. Dada, abolition of logic, which is the dance of those impotent to create. Dada, of every social hierarchy and equation set up for the sake of values by our valets. Dada, every object, all objects, sentiments, obscurities, apparitions, and the precise clash of parallel lines are weapons for the fight. Dada, abolition of memory. Dada, abolition of archaeology. Dada, abolition of prophets. Dada, abolition of the future. Dada, absolute and unquestionable faith in every god that is the immediate product of spontaneity. Rejecting, then, the extensive reasons of the bourgeois world, they went instead for absurdity. It could be said that they were absurdists before Camus, but Dadaist absurdity was not in response to the existential question, should I kill myself, but the existential calamity of social institutions such as war, patriotism, religion, capitalism and so forth, and the supposed reason that these institutions were, or were told, based on. It was an absurdity of disgust, and therefore nihilistic and destructive in its intentions. Dadaists also engaged in provocations, putting on, for example, public performances that both shocked and amused their audiences, scandalised the press, and got their publications censored and their members arrested, monitored by the police, and, in Hugo Ball's case, dismissed from his position as teacher at the Berner Hoch School for Music in Switzerland. Of course, like all good art movements, it devolved into factions. The Berlin School, which featured artists such as George Gross, Hannah Hoch and Raoul Hausmann were more explicitly political, siding with the communists. The Zurich Dada, home of Ball and Zara, leant more on chaos and absurdity without being explicitly political. The Paris branch had the involvement of André Breton, who was of course deeply interested in Freud's theories of the subconscious and believed that human liberation could possibly be found there, later on founding the Surrealist movement out of the ashes of Dada when it finally died. And die it did. It had to. The point of Dada, if we can say there was one, was to fail. Just as Jesus came to earth and failed to save humanity from sin, Dada failed to liberate humanity from the tyranny of bourgeois logic, of the razor-sharp accuracy of numbers and figures so beloved of capitalism. 
because, not despite, but because of the bluster and aggro, Data could not have survived and would not have wanted to. The last word to old mate Zara. Dada marches on, destroying more and more. From all these feelings of disgust, it draws no conclusions, no pride and no profit. It no longer even fights, for it knows that this serves no purpose. And here, we come to the great secret. Dada is a state of mind. That's why it transforms itself accordingly to all the events and nations it encounters. Dada applies itself to everything and yet is nothing. Dada is the point at which yes and no and all opposites meet not noisily in the palaces of human philosophy, but quite simply at street corners like dogs and grasshoppers. Data is useless, like everything else in life. Data has no pretensions, just as life should have none. By marching on to destroy, Data had to destroy itself. Data had to fail, because it knew the pure folly of trying to win against the edifice of society and the whirlwind of economics. Not that some Dadaists weren't serious about their politics both during and after Dada, but absurdism demands not some utopian final victory over the forces of stupidity and greed, because to fail in that aim would be the worst failure of all. The failure of Dada was the dignified failure of its own terms, collapsing in its own absurdity and nihilism. Dada was a dead end from the start, and it knew it, and it marched on anyway, secure in the knowledge that its end was coming and that in its time it had disrupted and done all it could do and wanted to do. Today, one of Dada's worst enemies, the art market, gleefully sells its relics for higher and higher prices, smugly proud of submitting its corpse to this ongoing disgrace. Dada doesn't give a fuck, because it's dead. It didn't give a fuck when it was alive. Dada didn't give a fuck about the greed and stupidity of the art market just as it hated capitalism and the greed and stupidity of the good, solid, pity citizens of the urbane cities it infested. Dada didn't even have to be how I'm describing it now. The spirit of Dada is the spirit of not giving a fuck. The same spirit that for a while inflamed punk before it allowed itself to be conformed rather than face the noble death Dada accepted. That same spirit is always there. The spirit of desperate rejection of the enormity of reality. The spirit of the absurd, the self-aware knowledge and acceptance of the sheer absurdity of our sheer absurd existence, which says no to reality, but yes to its own contradictory march to destruction. We're all trapped in a hell of shit and misery, and endless reformers and self-appointed revolutionaries offer us lies and bullshit as solutions to our misery, while the true rulers of the world, the businessmen, just sell us more shit that we have no choice but to buy. The great secret is Dada is a state of mind, of being aware of all this, of how shit it is, how hopeless we are, and how useless it is to tell it all to get fucked. And telling it all to get fucked anyway. This is the triumph of failure, a true Dadaist contradiction. <laughs>